Can we do a Shatner? William Shatner. I. So, uh, what do you think of a couple of dicks? <laughs> Can't believe you asked me that. Um, William Shatner and I have a little bit of a history, yes. It's true. By the way, it isn't the current Shatner that I poke fun at. You should know that. Yeah. I dig me the current Shatner, or as my girlfriend calls him, the Shat. <laughs> <laughs> the real Shat? She's the head writer on the show, by the way. So, I, And also invented the Larry King game. She's quite bright and funny and charming and sexy and way out of my league. But here's the thing. Um, <laughs> that's her applauding. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I forgot where I was, sorry. I if you, so if you want a future as a guest the, 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 the William Shatner, yeah. Yes. Well, the thing is, is that <laughs> the Shat, uh, I got caught up on the Shat. We, we've had this history where I've been making fun of the Star Trek TV series Shatner for 25 plus years. And, and I finally got, you know, I, I mean, I did it on the Comer O'Brien show. I, I was on been on his show a couple dozen times, and every time I've been on his show, he's asked me to do Shatter. I mean, every time. It got so bad, once on his show, he said, Kevin, look, I know I ask you to do Shatter every time you're here. I know you do other voices. So this time we thought we'd make it a little more fair as to who you do. And he brought out this huge wheel with a hundred names on it. <laughs> yeah, all William Shatter. <laughs> so imagine after all that, I get a call from William Shatner's office that he's writing a book, this was a few years ago now, about Trekkies called Get a Life. Some of you must have seen this book or read it. It's a great book. So he calls up and he tells me he's writing this book and he wants me to participate in one of the chapters wherein I will describe for the reader how to do, in his words, the consummate Captain Kirk impression. We well, have to understand, for a monkey who does voices, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> I dive into my car, I'm flying over to his office, uh, and then uh, there are these teenage girls who ask me, are you Jackie Chan? No <laughs> I'm flying over to his office. And you said, no, I'm Guy Kawasaki. <laughs> yeah, in my Lexus hybrid, because I don't have a Porsche. But, um, <laughs> uh, you don't drive a Prius? I get to his office. <laughs> I pull a Prius behind my Lexus. <laughs> behind my Lexus hybrid. <laughs> and uh, I get the shatters off. And on the way there, I, I sort of realized that I had gotten myself in over my head because how am I going to say to Shatner's face, well, Mr. Shatner, you were a shitty actor. <laughs> you gestured like a marionette and took pauses that no one could explain. <laughs> and that's why there's an impersonation, you idiot. I can't say that, right? But I have to say something for the book. So this is what I say to him and present it to him when I finally meet him in his office. Well, Mr. Shatner, um, Star Trek was a great show, phenomenal show, won Emmys. Great show. I shouldn't even have to tell you that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But some of the episodes weren't great, not all of them, you know? And the Enterprise, the bridge was kind of cheesy, like if you got on the elevator the wrong way and bumped the wall, it wobbled a little bit, a little bit. And some of the aliens that chased you around were kind of lame, like the one albino unicorn bear fucking thing, what was that? <laughs> My point, Mr. Shatner, is that the fans, you weren't just captain of the ship, you were captain of the show. And... I think you had to create drama where there wasn't any, sometimes. And in order to do that, I think maybe you had to uh, overact a little bit. <laughs> he prints all of that in the book verbatim. Yeah. And then editorializes underneath in his own words. <laughs> Kevin was absolutely right. And I hadn't realized it. until he pointed it out. It had all started years before. My first play on Broadway called The Adventures of Susie Wong, and the play was <laughs> a piece of shit. <laughs> we lost half the audience at intermission every performance. They didn't come back. <laughs> and I realized 
I had to do something. So the very next show, I went out on stage and said my lines differently. I said, I'll have a <laughs> cup of coffee. And the audience stayed riveted in their seats trying to figure out what the hell was the matter with <laughs> But Kevin was wrong about all the pausing I, I, I did on Star Trek. And the reason I paused so much is that I couldn't remember my damn lines. <laughs> That story and many others are now available on my new stand-up comedy blog. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>